Hello and welcome back to Crazy Hank TV. Today we thought we'd talk about Fun Facts from Gilligan's Island, a show that has never been off the air since it first aired back in 1965. I know I've seen every episode about a billion times, and I'm sure most of you have too, and I learned a few things while doing research on Gilligan's Island. First, let's start off with the original castaways included two secretaries, the first pilot that didn't air until 1992. I've never seen the original pilot, but it had two secretaries and a high school teacher and a completely different theme song. This is stuff I knew nothing about. Also, Star Wars composer John Williams wrote the original Calypso theme song heard in the pilot. Again, never seen the pilot, so I've never heard the song. I gotta find the pilot. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Jerry Van Dyke turned down the role as Gilligan. You might know he's the brother of Dick Van Dyke. He turned it down because he wanted to star in My Mother the Car. If you've never seen My Mother the Car, you're not messing anything. Probably a big mistake by Jerry Van Dyke. James Mansfield, Carol O'Connor, and Dabney Coleman were almost castaways. Mansfield tried out for the part of Ginger, Carol O'Connor for the Skipper, and Dabney Coleman was trying out for the Professor. Completely different cast, but those are three pretty big names that didn't make the cut. The Skipper's real name was Jonas Grumby. Now the backstory goes that the Skipper served on a PT boat with John F. Kennedy and also Quentin McHale of McHale's Navy. It may not be official, but we like to believe it was true. Gilligan's first name is Willie. Never knew that. I never knew that his first name was Willie. I, and I always assumed his first name was Gilligan. So. Again, something new I learned. The original pilot, it was a six-hour ride, not a three-hour tour. So that might have explained things a little differently, that maybe that's why the Howls brought all their money, because it was a six-hour ride, not a three-hour tour. It's a little bit different, and they brought all the change of clothes and all that fun stuff, because it was a little longer ride, a little more riskier. Alan Hale Jr. played a chef named Gilligan on Batman in the episode Og and I, one featuring Vincent Price's egghead. The police chief enters a diner and slides up to the counter and the cook comes out and it's Alan Hill. The chef says to him, right Gilligan. So there you go, a little, little bit of trivia there, a little fun fact that you didn't know about Gilligan's Island. The city of Denver is named after Bob Denver's great, great grandfather. How cool is that to have a relative that the city, and a big city, is named after one of your relatives? Very cool. The assassination of JFK delayed production of the series. The pilot of, for the series was filmed over several days in November of 1963 on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. The last day of shooting was scheduled for November 23, 1963 in Honolulu Harbor for the scene showing the SS Minnow embarking on its fateful three-hour tour. So there you go. It was delayed because of the assassination of JFK. The millionaire's wife was really a millionaire, Natalie Schaefer, who played Mrs. Lovey Howell and allegedly only accepted the invitation to play Mrs. Howell because it meant a free trip to Hawaii to film the pilot. During her marriage to actor Louis Calhern, the couple invested heavily into Beverly Hills real estate at the time when House and Rodeo Drive could be purchased for $50,000. When she died in 1991, Schaefer left most of her fortune to her favorite teacup poodle, she had no children, with instructions for the money to be donated to the motion picture and television hospital after the pooch's passing. Raquel Welch auditioned for the part of Marianne. Okay, I'm just not seeing that. I could see Ginger, but Marianne, it's just she doesn't have the girl next door looks. I think most would agree with me. I mean, I'm a big Raquel Welch fan, but I just don't see her as Marianne, and probably the producers didn't either. The skipper broke his arm falling out of a coconut tree. Alan Hale was old school. He fell out of a coconut tree. He missed the padding and hit his arm on the stage floor. And he was talking with Sherwood Schwartz after the season ended. He said, oh, I gotta go fix my arm. And that's when Sherwood Schwartz found out that he had broke his arm. It's just, uh, what dedication? <laughs> you don't see that much anymore. The millionaire was a cheapskate. Jim Backus, who played Mr. Howe, was beloved by his castmates. In addition to being the source of endless jokes, and willing to coach less experienced actors on how to ad-lib and deliver a punchline. He was, al he was also very cheap. Don Wells recalled how during the first season he would often invite Natalie Schaefer out to lunch and realized that he had left his wallet back at the studio. Before the cast departed for summer hiatus, Schaefer presented Bacchus with a bill of over $300 and the total owed for all those meals. Kind of a funny story about Jim Bacchus.
The professor and Marianne were not included in the original credits, but Bob Denver said, nope, they got to be included. They're part of the show, and you got to wonder why they weren't included, because they're main characters of the cast of seven. They're main characters along with the other five. So hats off to Bob Denver. Also, Don Wells was the most popular cast member on the show. She received the most fan mail. And I guess that answers the question, Marianne or Ginger? I think, the, I think most people went towards Marianne. I started recording this a couple days ago before Don Wells passed away. Just like to say, it's so sad that 2020 took another very likable person from all accounts and just a talented person, and we're sad to see her go. So rest in peace, Don Wells. You will be missed. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. I'm out. Bye.